Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and uh, I'm introducing the main module of the Fluid Ninja VFX tools, that is the Fluid Ninja module. I'm loading in the Ninja Tools level, going full screen, and on the second page of the intro you could see a flowchart telling that the main module is feeding all other modules with data. We're gonna talk about this in details later on. Here, in the upper left corner, you could see the generic parts of the graphical user interface. These are constant. Uh, you could switch to different modules, but they are always there. So, right now, uh, here is the module selector, and I'm picking Fluid Ninja. And here is, uh, this roll down is the preset selector. Uh, once you did your selection, uh, you could press the up and down arrows to basically roll over to the next preset. And these buttons are to save, duplicate or delete presets. Tooltips are very important, providing detailed information. You might want to use these. The remaining part of the graphical user interface is divided into sections and it is module specific. Um, on the right you could see a quad viewport arrangement, four viewports depicting uh, input and output data, density and velocity data. Uh, everything that is needed to understand uh, what is going on in the simulation and how the output looks like. Um, returning to the graphical user interface, in the canvas section you could go to full screen, single viewport, or picking the quad. You could set uh, the resolution of the image, of the output image. And you could offset, scale and rotate the canvas, also blank the canvas. Basically restart the simulation. Maybe the most important part of uh, Fluid Ninja is this uh, bake module. With these three important buttons, stop, play, and record. As you have seen, I've already recorded a 32 frame long uh, flipbook animation, which is instantly played here, which is good the, since you could uh, compare it with the original simulated output density. You could export uh, the generated texture and the containing materials. We're gonna talk about this later on. Right now, I'm just closing the baking viewports. Returning to the graphical user interface, velocity and density options are um, basically influencing how the simulation looks like. The direction of the velocity field, the, the strength of the velocity field. Notice how I am going to negative value and the whole thing is, is flowing inwards now, giving it a direction, making it look like a, a comet. and input and output density influence like the larger the out weight is the longer these virtual density particles live basically if you're uh, using uh, low values it is more like a flame and with large values closer to one is more like smoke um, all other features are just to color and shade what you see Maybe I, I should mention Sharpen, which is trivial, but with negative values it is doing Blur. That's a cool feature. Ninja is eating three kinds of inputs. Particles, bitmaps or freehand drawing. Uh, right now there is this particle system defined and in the roll down menu you could pick other particle systems, cascade particles. I'm loading in the logo preset and notice how in the input section the particle roll down is not defined and the density from bitmap is set to ninja logo and as you could see we are using this bitmap as, as a, a source to drive the simulation once uh, there is no particles and uh, no other things defined 
we are uh, falling back to the default mode of Ninja, which is a uh, freehand drawing. I could erase the canvas. I could draw things. I could set the same parameters as we did with uh, with cascade particles. But the difference is that right now uh, Ninja is using what I have been drawing here in real time. I could even capture uh, velocity. Let me just go full screen. It's like a painter. Um, later on we're gonna talk about these uh, presets in details, what the s properties of a certain preset are and why we are demonstrating these and how we have been creating these. But right now I'm just showing you that uh, at the bottom of this graphical user interface stripe there is this export FGA data option, again with a single record button. Once you press this uh, a dialog box appears and you are able to export the velocity field information, the output velocity, to something that could be turned into a vector field later on. Please notice that at the bottom of this graphical user interface stripe there is this notices section which is uh, basically metadata for a certain preset. Once you're creating presets you could write your own copyright or uh, instructions here or notices it's useful and it's unique for each present 